how do you know if what God's calling you to do is what you're supposed to do now or if it's what you're supposed to do later? Maybe you don't feel qualified to do it right now. Are you supposed to wait until you're a master or an expert in that thing before you can do it? Or can you start helping people now? In today's episode, I'm going to give you three questions to ask yourself to start to shift your thinking around what it means to be qualified to do the thing that God's asking you to do. Hey mama, do you find yourself wishing you knew you were on the right path with your business or wanting to know how to do it all as a work at home mom and entrepreneur? If you struggle with imposter syndrome, mom guilt, or fear of failure, then you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Alexia, a Christian mindset coach, passionate about teaching moms how to renew their minds to find success both in business and motherhood. You can overcome the negative thoughts holding you back from fully stepping into your calling. I know what it's like to worry your business will never work, to feel mom guilt every time you work on your business, to realize your mindset is hindering you, but not knowing how to change it in a Christ-centered way. I created the Mom with a Calling podcast to teach you how to use the powerful combination of God's word and proven mindset strategies to help you break free from negative, paralyzing thoughts and gain clarity and confidence to go where God is leading you. As you step out of the old way of thinking and into God's way, you'll find more peace, joy, and purpose. Pop in those earbuds and get ready to let God work in you so he can work through you. Hey there, and welcome back to the Mama with a Calling podcast. This is Alexia. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to let you know that we have an email list. So as you all know, Black Friday is coming up next week. And I wanted to let you know that if you want to hear about our Black Friday deals, you need to get on the email list. So just to get on our general email list and to also another huge perk of that is that I always email out every single week um, the episodes as they come out. So if you're like me, you have a million podcasts that you follow. And if you don't want to miss them, because I know that there are so many that I follow, but I miss half of the new ones because there's a bunch of them. <laughs> so if you want to make sure that you don't miss the, the newest episodes, go there and you'll get the, on the email list to receive those notifications. So to do that, just go to mamawithacalling.com slash podcast. And there's a way to sign up right there on the front or no, at the bottom of the page that lets you be able to catch all of the episodes. So I just wanted to let you guys know that if you're interested in receiving those, receiving update sales, including our Black Friday sale. So for today's episode, I wanted to do a follow up for the one I did last time where I talked with Julie, um, the the, the episode about postpartum depression, because I realized one of the powerful things as I I re-listened to that interview with her was this change in perspective where I think so I've heard so many people say this, and I know I've said this in the past, where we really think that if we aren't qualified to do something that we should not be coaching, or we should not be teaching, or we should not be doing anything in that area. And I hear so many people talk about this, but it's not from a perspective of, of imposter syndrome, though, for sure, that is out there. I mean, yes, we go through that as well, thinking like, who am I to do this? But a lot of times we end up convincing ourselves that the reason we don't need to do it is because we should not do the thing that we actually feel like we really want to teach on. And so usually what I hear about this in a lot of areas is, well, I'm still learning how to read my Bible, so I can't teach other people about it. Or I'm, you know, just a new mom with only a small child, so I can't, I can't teach yet on how to do that. Or I just started homeschooling, so I can't teach others. And a lot of times that ends up morphing from who am I to do this to I'm not supposed to do this out of a place of integrity. Meaning you don't, you feel like it's not right to do that, to teach on that, to coach on that, to whatever on that, until you are an expert, until you have mastered it, until you have worked your way through it and you are on the other side of it and you can for sure help walk somebody through it. But as I listened to Julie's story from before, I was challenged on that thought because I potentially was in the same kind of boat thinking like that. And I realized that her, well, I guess I realized in that conversation with her, it brought up for me that I didn't know, but I still kind of believe that even though I would say, no, if God's calling you to something, you need to do it. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to talk about three questions that you can ask yourself to help you shift your thinking. Because if God is calling you to something, even if you don't feel qualified, 
that does not mean that you should not do it, right? It doesn't mean you say, wait a minute, I need to wait for a few years and then I'll say yes. We say it in that context and it sounds silly, but are we actually doing that? Are you actually saying no? Because to you, it doesn't seem logical. And a lot of that comes from, if we if we really think about it, it comes from our training, right? In today's world, you're not allowed, quote unquote, I mean, you're not allowed to do certain jobs until you receive the proper training. You are qualified. You are certified to do this thing. And I think a lot of times when we come home to be with our kids and we we start an online business, we're going, I don't have any training in this. I don't know what I'm doing. And it really messes with our heads. And to say that someone cannot teach the Bible because they haven't gone to seminary, how many people are not serving and helping in a capacity that they could simply because they don't have a certain degree behind their name or certain letters behind their name. So I wanted us to look at these three questions that'll really help you discern when you like what to do when you feel like you're called but not qualified. So number one, ask yourself if it's true that God cannot call someone to do something unless they're qualified. So the reason I ask that is because we tell ourselves that God would not ask us. He would not ask you to do something that you're not qualified to do. But let's look at scripture. Is that actually true? Even in your own life, do you see that that's true? Do you see any example where that's not true? And I say look at scripture because we can sort of justify our logical brains will say, well, you know, she did that, but maybe God didn't tell her to. Okay, so let's look at scripture, though. When you look at scripture, there are plenty of examples. And in fact, I would say most examples of someone who's asked to do something. And by all accounts, you don't understand why God would pick them. God has a reason and God chose them. But we as humans, and, and it's hard for us to look at the Bible that way because we know the story. Like we know that David becomes king and it was awesome. But David, when he got chosen to be king, was a shepherd boy. Like what? what did he know? Like You would think you're not qualified. You're not the biggest, tallest, strongest, anything. But God saw beyond that. So looking at scripture, if you can see that there are examples of God calling someone to do something that they weren't qualified to do, then is it possible that God would call you, call any of us to do something that we're technically not qualified to do based on what we see? And when you start to shift your thinking in that way, This allows your brain to open up and say, wait a minute, if God has done that, God could do that. Is God doing that with me now? And it helps you not close that opportunity, close that door to where you may be actively trying to grow in a certain area or waiting around for God to reveal the other thing you're supposed to do because you know you want to do that thing, but you're not ready for it yet or you thought you weren't. But really, it is the thing that God's asking you to do. So this is going to help you open, open your thoughts in that way. Okay. So the second one then leads from the first one, which is what qualifies you to finally be quote unquote good enough or allowed to help others? Where's the cutoff there? And the idea here is that you can't really say it's subjective, right? Because one person's definition of being good enough and qualified is going to be different than somebody else's. So how do you know when you're, when you've arrived, when you are good enough, when you are the person that's allowed to help somebody else and who says you're allowed or not allowed? If you think about Joseph, right, in in Genesis, what if Joseph had said that he couldn't be second in command over Egypt because he had only been in comparatively menial positions? Or if Peter and the other apostles said they couldn't lead the early church because they didn't go to seminary or were only fishermen? There are so many examples, example after example of people saying, well, I'm not good enough. I haven't had these qualifications or like Paul saying, I literally persecuted the Christians. I was a Pharisee, you know, whatever. But he doesn't, he just says, God told me to do this and now I'm doing this like the end. And so I really want us to think and be careful about what we're saying is good enough or where that cutoff is and who gets to decide. Because at the end of the day, it's God, right? God decides. And so if we really are trusting that God decides when we're good enough, when we're allowed, then if he's asking you to do it, and if he's telling you to do it now, then why? And well, and if you know that he asked people 
to do things that they don't feel qualified for, then why would he not be? Why is it that he couldn't be asking you right now? And that leads me to the third one, which is what is God asking you to do that you're not an expert at right now, per se, but you're able to help others even a little bit. I want you to do an inventory here. Like think about the things that come to mind for you. Pray, ask God. You probably already know something right now. Like when I'm saying this, like there's something that's popping to your head, coming to the forefront. And I want you to ask yourself, why can't you do that thing? Why can't you help people in that area? Because remember, God isn't going to ask you to do something that you haven't been prepared for. You just might not know it yet. You might not know that you've been prepared. So while you don't think you're qualified, if God is calling you, then he is saying you are ready. Like when he called Gideon a valiant warrior, Gideon was not a valiant warrior at that moment. But God saw in his heart and knew that he was. And so he told him he was. And then he became that very thing because God knew he was already before Gideon even understood. Same thing with David. David didn't know that he was going to be king, but God knew. God calls people to be what he already knows they are deep down, what they're already destined to become, what his will is for them, what he knows they can be and do. But if you say no to that because you don't see it, then you are, you're saying that God's wrong, essentially, that God can't be asking you to do that thing. And so if you're feeling resistance or fear or doubt about this, it might help to remember that while God is calling you and he will use you and you'll do the physical act of, of whatever it is, you'll actually be helping people doing the podcast, doing the coaching, etc., Really, at the end of the day, it's God working through you. He's not asking you to be good enough, smart enough, talented enough, though he will use those things. Because like I said, he's been preparing you. But he can do infinitely more than even your best, right? Even even if you did your ultimate, ultimate best, God is going to do better. So really what he's asking is for you to sacrifice those things, to give them to him in service like the loaves and the fish, right? He can do more with little than you can do with a little. I wanted to be careful here though, because while I did say that, you know, it does help to kind of to identify the thing that you already feel like you can help people with. It could be that God's asking you to do something that you don't even think is even in your, your tool belt at all. Maybe he's asking you to write and you're like, I am not a writer, but that doesn't mean he's not asking. It doesn't mean you aren't a writer. You just don't think you're a writer, right? So or maybe you're, he's calling you to a podcast and you're like, uh, I have nothing to say. I'm not a talker, et cetera. So it, it could be that you feel like you have nothing to say, but God's saying you have something to say. I think about this analogy that I heard. I have no idea where, but it's like if you're sitting on a beach and you see somebody drowning, like they're literally flailing, they cannot swim, but you can, you can't swim very well either, but you can doggy paddle. And so are you going to stand there? Being like, I hope an Olympic swimmer comes by so they can help you. Or are you going to get out there and doggy pedal your best to save them? That person does not care that you cannot, that you are not an expert swimmer. They do not care that you are not like doing the breaststroke and whatever kind of whatever to help. They just need to save, right? They need help and you can help them. You are just able to do something a little bit better than they are. And that's all they need. So when we think about having an online business, and we think about God using us to do some kind of service in this world, it does not have to be something immaculate. It doesn't have to be something so big and amazing and powerful that, and like before we can actually do it. If you literally have a child that is a year old, you know, already know more than the mom who is currently pregnant with her first. If you have worked through, I don't know, like if you quit your job and you came home and you worked through all the fear and all that stuff with that, you were already farther ahead than the person who's still sitting in her job. If you've designed your own website and created it and built it out for your business, then you already know how to do something that so many other women out there have no clue how to do and will gladly pay you to do for them. You might not be able to code. You might not be able to do all this fancy stuff, but you can do the basics of what they need. And so when we say, I'm not qualified enough, imagine the things that people out there are praying for. They wish that somebody wasn't charging $5,000 to do a website because they really can't afford that, but they really need a website and they really, they really don't know how to do it. But if you could just be charging, you know, $400 to do their website or $500 or even $1,000, then that's a lot less and they can do that, right? 
or like I said, the the mom example or any of those things. If the, the pregnant mom with her first is looking for a mom who's just walked through that season, not the mom who's got 10 kids and they're anywhere up to 18 years old, whatever. She wants the mom who understands her where she has where she is right now because they were just there and they're more relatable. They're more approachable. And a lot of times there's a benefit to being the smaller person, meaning the smaller business. You don't have this giant audience. You don't have all these clients yet. You don't have all this stuff under your belt. That's awesome because the clients you do have are going to get your full on attention. So I just wanted to do this episode and I'll do a recap real quick. Um, So with these three questions, I think I said some more questions, but three main questions to really help you let go of the thinking that God cannot, will not, should not ask you to do something unless you have checked all the boxes, went a certain amount, become a master of that thing. And the way we do that is by changing, like looking at the truth, biblical truth and mindset strategies right here. So biblical truth, we look at the Bible and say, what has God done? Because if he's done it before, he can do it again. And he, he doesn't change. So if he thought this way before, then why would he not think this way now? And then our mindset shift here is we're looking for evidence to the contrary of what we currently believe. So we're saying, I believe this thing, but really it's not true. Like it's a, it's a false belief, a limiting belief. I'm saying this is one thing, but it's not true. God does different. I've seen it. And then we're starting to ask these questions to shift our thinking to allow you to make those breakthroughs in that mindset. And be able to take a different action to see things differently. So those questions again are number one, ask yourself if it's true that God cannot call someone to do something unless they're qualified. Look at examples of the Bible. So that's where biblical truth comes in. That's powerful because it is the truth. Number two, what qualifies you to finally be good enough or allowed to help others? Where's the cutoff? What's that standard there? And number three, what is God asking you to do right now? that you're not necessarily an expert in, but that you know that you can help others even a little bit. Or maybe you don't even know. Let's take that part out. Let's say, what is God asking you to do that you're not an expert in? But if you look at it, let's change the question a little bit. If you looked at it, how could you help someone, anyone who's behind you? Are they a year behind you? Are they five steps behind? Like whatever it is. Can you see a way that what you know, what you've experienced, what you've gone through, that you from where you stand, do you have anything to offer them to help them in any capacity to move to where from where they are to where you are? I want you to write those questions or write those answers down. And I would love it if you would come and share those answers with us in the Mama with a Calling Facebook group. I would love to hear what you are called to help others with. Because when you tell other people, this is what I think God is calling to help, calling me to do, then of, you're telling others and you're admitting it, you're owning it, and you're saying yes to what God's telling you. And then you never know, somebody else could be like, that's me, I would love for you to help me with that. So to do that, just go to mamawithacalling.com slash community, or you can find us on Facebook, and join us in there in the Facebook group. And just let us know your answers. What is God calling you to do right now? And I want to remind you that this is exactly what I do in my coaching sessions, where in a biblical mindset session, I will help you work through the negative thoughts that are holding you back and we will replace those with truth from scripture and really just work through what are the the lies that you're believing right now and help you to overcome those because sometimes we can identify them, but we still have a hard time actually working through them and that's another powerful aspect of coaching. So if you would want extra support in this area, if you just want somebody to to help you process through all of this and figure out what what really is the truth. Is God asking you to do this now? Or is it something that you're supposed to wait on? All of those things. I would love to support you as your coach. Just go to mamawithacalling.com slash coaching to book one of those sessions. So I hope you're encouraged by this episode and that you continue to shift your mindset toward Jesus just a little bit, a little bit more every single week, every single episode so that you can do all that he is calling you to do, even if you don't feel qualified. I'll see you next time. And in the meantime, keep pursuing your calling. Thanks for listening to the Mama with a Calling podcast. As always, you'll find the show notes for today's episode at mamawithacalling.com slash podcast. Really quick before you head out, are you loving these episodes? 
To make sure this podcast gets in the ears of as many mamas as possible, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. I'm going to be reading your reviews on the podcast, so I can't wait to hear from you. Also, if you know someone that needs to hear these episodes, grab a screenshot and share it on Instagram and don't forget to tag me at Mama with a Calling so I can share it in my stories. Until next time, keep pursuing your calling.